I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. Every now and then I get a question from a viewer that really sticks with me. And a couple months ago I got this one that I want to share with you, and honestly it's kind of been with me a lot. And it's a question that I think so many different people can relate with. It's about dating and if you should change yourself to be with someone else. And if you don't change yourself, what if you're always alone? I think these are probably things that a lot of people have thought. So here's the email. Dear Thomas, I love your honesty and advice to queer men in Get Out. I hope you can help me. Uh, Get Out is a weekly magazine that I write an advice column for. I identify as non-binary, but to the world, I look like a feminine gay guy. I often fear men will only want to f me or fetishize me, but won't want to commit to me in a relationship. I often fear that I have to hide or change who I am in order for me to be admired, attractive, and wanted by other gay men. In a sense, I have to butch up. I just turned 25 and I've never been in a relationship that wasn't friends with benefits that lasted more than a few months. People say, continue to be true to yourself and hopefully the right person will come. But the gay male world has an obsession with masculinity and muscles and shaming femininity and slenderness. I feel stigmatized and believe the odds are against me to truly be loved. I also struggle to maintain friendships with men because many of them I find empty and arrogant. I don't feel comfortable comfortable identifying with male things. I have been abused and used by many men in my life, including my father and brother, and yet long to have a healthy bond both emotionally and sexually with a man regardless of my estrangement from my manhood. Help me, Thomas. You are my only hope. So this email breaks my heart for a lot of different reasons. The first, I'm so sorry to hear that you were abused. That's obviously never good. And abuse can have huge implications on the adults we become. It may also be where a lot of the negative thoughts you have about men come from and why you may struggle to maintain friendships with them. Second, I hate the thought of feeling like you have to change yourself to be accepted, especially by a community filled with people who know what it feels like to be rejected. And a lot of the gay community is obsessed with masculinity and muscular bodies, and I think the truly sad part is that a lot of LGBTQ youth grow up feeling like there's no one around them who is similar to them because of their sexuality, then they move to a big city, see all these extremely muscular and masculine gay guys, and then they think, oh, in order to fit in and not be rejected by these people, I have to be the same as them. Hey guys, so in filming this video, I realized that there's something that I wanted to say that I didn't say, so now I'm cutting it in. So what I'm actually talking about here a lot is social comparison theory. So social comparison theory is this theory that originated in the 1950s, but basically was trying to explain one way that we turn into the people as adults that we do. This theory suggests is that we compare ourselves to the people around us. So if it has to do with maybe what we look like or our ability Abilities, we will look to other people who maybe look similar to us or have the same abilities and then compare what we're able to do to what they're able to do or what we look like compared to what they look like. And then based on our own self-evaluation of if we are better than or less than or equal to these people, we will change things about ourselves, like our behavior or what we look like. So specific to what this person is asking, social comparison theory could be very different for gay and bisexual men. So if you are, say, living in middle America and you realize that you are gay or bisexual, maybe you're in your teens and you don't know anyone around you that is also gay, you're not going to have very many people that you could compare yourself to. So according to this theory, if there are not people around you for comparison, you're going to look outside of the people around you. So where might you look? Well, a lot of youth may be looking to things like pornography to find out what maybe they're supposed to act like or look like. So you could be looking at things like that and thinking, okay, well, if I'm gay and I wanna be part of this gay group, then I guess I have to look like these people. So I think that that might be something that's going on a lot for gay and bisexual men. And obviously this is changing. Um, the idea of what gender is and what you're supposed to be is also changing a lot. So that's what I'm talking about here and I think it's really relevant and I'm gonna put a link in the description if you'd like to read more about it. Um, and maybe take a minute to think about who you compare yourself to, how you decide that you're good enough at things, that you're attractive enough, that you can do things well enough. Who is it that you're comparing yourself to? And is that positive or negative? Is it helping you or is it hurting you? 
The larger question is, how much of ourselves should we alter or change when trying to date? I think a lot of us have probably felt that way in one way or another. That there's something so wrong with us that we're just simply unlovable and we're never going to really be loved or accepted by anyone. I think there are always ways to improve ourselves and getting feedback from others is very important. That doesn't mean that everyone is always going to be right or that you should change something about yourself, but self-reflection is one way we learn. For example, if a lot of people tell you that you're self-centered, mean, arrogant, that's something to take into consideration and you may want to make some adjustments. Your gender presentation is a different story, and there's no point to trying to be someone you're not. Let's imagine that you do decide to change these things about yourself, in this case, butch it up. Then you end up in a relationship and you're going to feel like you're just playing a role and not really yourself. Clearly, this could lead to even more feelings and thoughts about how no one will ever really love you, especially if you're hiding who you are. The honest part is that, well, no matter what you change about yourself, there is no guarantee that you or anyone else is ever going to meet the right one. Because there is no one. This doesn't mean that love doesn't exist or that emotions are fake, but just the idea of the right one is a fallacy. It's completely normal to want to be in a relationship, but it becomes really problematic when what you want starts to feel like a necessity, something you need so badly that you'd be willing to change large parts of yourself to get it. Instead, I'd recommend focusing on loving yourself and being exactly who you are and who you want to be all the time. Because honestly, when you love yourself, you don't need anyone else to love you. Sure, it would be nice, but that's a preference, not a need. So I say spend time falling in love with yourself. Treat yourself like you're already in a relationship. Maybe someone will come along, maybe they won't. But either way, at least you'll be happy with who you are. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.